Marcus Conti reporting. <clears throat> oh, beautiful fall day <laughs> in New York. So I want to start off with a story. I love this story. This fucking story rocks, man. So the um, ancient wisdom, I'm into that. I'm into like, like I'm into movies like 300 that talk about, you know, fucking King of Sparta. Spartans! <laughs> this is Sparta, by the way. Welcome. So the, um, used to be these uh, old teachers, right? They were called, some, some called them gurus. Spiritual teachers. People that would that would um, uh, disperse spiritual knowledge. <laughs> right? Fucking spiritualists. Gurus. Uh, remember those guys? And um, people would pay a lot of money to go, to, to go listen to the talk, right? You know, they... It was mostly like, you know, like India, Bengali. <laughs> right? These fucking guys, right? I gotta get around this. Look at this. I'm gonna tell the story while I navigate through the ocean. Look at this ocean. Oh, fucking puddle, my man. God damn, gotta get around the puddle. Oh, I'm gonna go this way. Might get wet. So, so the, um, so the guru, right? Guru was, he was the man. Everybody's paying to come see the guru and learn something about spiritual, uh, spiritual stuff right rich people rich people I got money I'll pay learn something about spiritual I didn't pay right so they so they'd show up right and they get a nice room they get some food right and they listen to the guru tell them what to do right and in every one of these places well at least the good ones there would be this guy, uh, there would be a, a T-boy. <laughs> his job, his job was to make tea for the guru. It's called the Bengali T-boy. Right? And the guru would take his seat at the, in front of the class and begin to disseminate his spiritual teachings to his paid crowd. Right? But the guy was a pain in the ass. Guy was fucking annoying. Insulting. Loud. People trying to sit and meditate to be burping and farting and calling people names, you fat fuck. You know, get your ass off my, my fucking get your ass into the room. That guy was obnoxious. Fucking Bengali tea boy, right? I do this job. So just, why don't you make your fucking tea? Go give the guru the tea. Why are you busting my ass? I paid to be here. Right? And so the class would begin and days would go by and this guy would just grow more and more fucking obnoxious. Right? What the fuck is going on, man? Why they got this guy? What the fuck? This guy's obnoxious, man. Why is the guru... And people complain, go to the guru, guru. This guy is just so, is, is, is despicable. Can we get rid of him? Right? And so the class was coming to an end, right? And a new part of the class was beginning. Right? And people were so happy the class was over. Get rid of the, this guy is fucking farting up a storm and burping, right? Bengali tea boy. Right? And, they, and they were going to another part of India. That's the second part of the teaching. Right? <laughs> so while they're packing up, the, the Bengali tea boy is, is, is going with them. The guru is taking the Bengali tea boy with him. And people were just, again, irate. They're like, what? why, guru? We don't understand why. Why do we have to, t why can't we just leave him home? And he said to the crowd, he said to his students, he says, I pay that man good money to be here, to show us the lesson, to teach us, to teach us exactly what he teaches us. Right? Shabbat to make fucking tea. 
His job is to push your buttons and make you see what you're afraid of. To make you, to show you where you're comfortable. Unjustly so comfortable. To challenge your thinking. To challenge you when we're most, when we're, we're in, we're, when we're on, when people feel free to attack us or criticize us or you know what I'm saying then we're, we're forced to reconsider or hold our ground that's the teaching of the Bengali tea boy I love that story man that's so powerful and what does it have to do with today <laughs> it has everything to do with today Look at the comments down below. La 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 la. Right? Uncensored comments. Not the fake ones that you see in, in you know, uh, that you, you've become used to seeing where people delete opinions that they don't agree with. But real comments. <clears throat> How they ebb and flow. The nature of the attack. Is it an attack on me personally? <clears throat> Is it an attack on you as a crowd? Listening to someone like me dis disseminate a truth? Is it all of those things? But man, it's, it's, it heats up. And it ebbs and flows. And certain attacks come and go. And they're all absolutely necessary in the grander, in the grander picture. Because they teach us to critically think again. I will not delete comments and as we enter into an election season it's going to get more and more intense and how will you handle it right know thy enemy know thy enemy thy enemy is showing himself this is our country it's a country on the line so critical thinking you see that. You see that. You see the attack. Are you going to let it affect you? Are you going to... Ooh, I'm so insulted. So we see ourselves... The way I see myself and the way you see me are different. See, and, it, and it's okay. Right? It's necessary. It's good. Right? Like you see me... Oh, people... A lot of people see me as... You know, the jerky bubbles or slap shot. <laughs> Wayne's world, right? Fucking, I'm, I'm Garth and Wayne combined, right? <laughs> right? But I don't see that. I see myself... I don't know how I see, I see myself as Leonidas, king of Sparta. Ha <laughs> ha. Right? Spartans, what is your occupation? <laughs> That's how I see myself. And nothing's going to change that, right? Some bunch of insults, right? Be grounded in the truth. Because we saw a lot of truth this weekend, this week. We saw, what did we see? We saw a, bom we saw a bomber face justice. What did he? He's in a, he's in a, he's in a prison in... 800 miles away from his home in New York City. 800 miles away from Florida. Facing facing a new bunch of judges that want to ream him a new ass. Right? Caesar Altare Sayak. We saw that. And we saw all the bullshit surrounding it that a mountain of circumstantial evidence that suggests that he didn't do what he said he what they say he did but we're expected to believe it and most people will with a fake media promoting the, the the fake narrative why because they're comfortable they're comfortable you know what's a good analogy i guess i, I should introduce the blue pill red pill if you're watching this channel you're red pilled or on the edge of becoming red pilled. And what does that mean? It means that you've chosen to, to see the truth. 
and nothing else. There's nothing else there. See, if you, if you take the blue pill, like in the Matrix, if you take the blue pill, you go back to your simple life and everything's fine and, and, and there's no problem. You get your little paycheck and you go to your little cubicle and, you know, you, you pet your dog and you take, walk your, your child to school and, 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 and everything is fine. It's fine. Just do what you tell them. You'll get your, your IRA and your CPR and your BBB and your RRA when you retire. And you'll be fine, right? Or you could go deep into the red and take the red pill where you discover the exact nature of reality. The whole fucking unadulterated truth. Right? Because if, if when you choose the blue pill, you choose to suspend critical thinking. That you can see a comment and be swayed and insulted by it. Or convinced that this, this person is, is right and the guy talking to you t on the video is wrong. Right? Right? Are they paid to do it? Well, let's not be so conspiratorial. Not everybody's a CIA and an FBI, but... There are think tanks that would like to shut this down, shut down any truth movement, or at least get in the way of it and own it, right? right. So, going forward, enjoy the comments. Enjoy the hate. What was the term? Love, love Trump's hate? Well, it's real, you know? It's, 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 there's, there's lessons in that there's lessons in that in that uh, that noise. Learn, observe. That's what I want to say today. It's windy out today. Oh, this is a good quote. I saw this. I was reading this shit. Someone said to uh, Leonidas, king of Sparta, and his three hundred men. Someone said. Except for being king, you are not at all superior to us. And Leonidas, Leonidas said, But were I not better than you, I should not be king. What's he talking about? He's talking about merit. He's not talking about bloodline or being handed the throne. He's talking about qualification to do the to get the thing done right right merit I like that I, I like that what, are, what else what do I have what other notes did I have I like reading from notes oh you want to hear a good quote I wrote down this is a good quote was, uh, Kurt Cobain said this. They laugh at me because I'm different. And I laugh at them because they're all the same. <laughs> Kurt Cobain. Nirvana. Come as you are. As you were. As I want you to be. <laughs> I'm going to blow my nose. Excuse me. So that's really all I wanted to talk about is the importance of critical thinking, right? Lesson in truth. Not my lesson to you, your lesson to yourself. That there's, a, there's, there's, there's enormous powers over you that want to see you deaf, dumb, and blind, and quiet. Consume. Be afraid. Don't think. Do. Do what we tell you to do. Now, all these, myth, all these myths about CIA control, mind control, and, and various think tanks and, and propaganda machines in our country, is that all just bullshit? Is this all conspiracy theory? No, it's not. It, there's, there's, we, we don't know the, the, you know the depth of a lot of it because a lot of it is done in secret. 
in, in military style operations where see if you control the message you control the, the you, if you control the narrative you control the, the people right don't kid yourself 300 million people in a country the only thing that holds them back is the is is the the thought that they are being held back right because all they have to do is stand up and the table flips over okay <laughs> 300 million, 330 million people in the country and 1% is running the show? <laughs> what holds it in place? So, so critically think. Look at the evidence. Look at the evidence in front of you. Just the two stories recently, right? Right? I mean, there's so much evidence to suggest that a guy in Florida did not build a bunch of bombs and send them to prominent Democrats. That there's something else there. That there's, there's no evidence to suggest that that's what happened. Right? But we're expected to believe it. A gunman runs into a bar and 30 shots are fired and 12 dead bodies. Smoke bombs. <laughs> right? I mean that's statistically impossible that I, I was told by by law enforcement guys. They said to, to hit to to kill 13 people with 30 shots in the dark with smoke bombs <laughs> firing randomly. <laughs> that's what they heard. 30 shots, not a stitch of blood, nowhere. They heard the guy. I carried the oh a cop. He got shot. I carried him out. He was unconscious. And he's standing in the camera, not a stitch of blood. Has anybody ever seen some? I saw a guy fall out a fucking window once, right? It was no joke, man. I saw I was standing, I was, I was in a village downtown, right? And we're sitting there, me and like two, three friends, we're eating breakfast. Outside. And a guy, some junkie guy, falls out a window. The fucking St. Mark's Hotel on 8th Street fell right out the fucking window. Boom! Right? Right? We heard the hit. He hit the awning. He fell out the third story. He hit the awning. You know, fell on his fucking head, right? Dead, right? He was, oh my God, for a minute or two. But then he was, he was, he, but blood, you know, like, like, blood everywhere, you know? Like, it fucking, his head opened up like a, like a, like a cantaloupe. Like a watermelon. Right? Blood. Real blood. Gore. Right? But, but 13 people are slaughtered in a nightclub. And the fake news media, now they want to release a, a, a video of, of, of a bunch of flashes in the dark. Come on, man. Where's your critical thinking, people? Because 90% of the people are not going to challenge that. They can say, oh, yeah, yeah, fucking, oh, yeah, yeah, gunshots. Yeah, gunshots, but are they blanks? Is there bullets in the gun? <laughs> Is it staged? Is it fake? Anybody could stage. It's like a Hollywood scene. It's like, there's no fucking bullets. It's fake. Dead bodies in California. So, critical thinking. Look at the evidence. Don't listen to me. I mean, I'm just the, I'm just the, you know, I'm the messenger. That's all I am. Right? I'm the catcher in the rye. You haven't figured it out yet. So, truth. Grounded in the truth. Think critically. Be open to suggestions. Be open to criticism. Don't hide from it. Don't be insulted by it. Welcome it. I welcome you. I welcome your hate. Right? And I diffuse it, right? I mean, the last story, I think I told this story once before, but as a good way of closing, it reminds me of um, Eminem. Oh, I fucking love Eminem, right? MC, right? Rapper. Someone said, Conti, you're a rapper. I'm not a fucking rapper. <laughs> I don't know anything about rap. Right? But I get the point, right? So Eminem, brilliant, right? Brilliant young guy, right? He's, he, he figured out a way to beat his, to, to 
to beat his competition. You know, and the, and the street form of rap, the real beginning of it was, or it evolved actually into it, where it would be one rapper against the other rapper. And it was, a, you know, who could diss the other one more and own him in his rap. You know? You know what I'm saying? And you saw that last scene with Eminem. You remember that shit? Like, like the guy was... Like, like his, 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 he's getting ready to diss his mother. Uh, he's gonna, he's gonna fucking. There's competition, right? They're ready to go against each other. And um, hold on, I'm about to get hit by a car. I don't want to spoil my story. This fucking guy's driving in the park. No goddamn respect. <laughs> so, so they, so it's the MCs. They're gonna, he's. He's thinking, oh, this guy's going to fucking talk about my mother. Oh, I'm going to, what am I going to do? And what does he do? He, he, in his rap, he goes first and he diffuses everything about himself. Right? Everything. He tells, he, he, he tells you how shitty his life was. And how fucked up everything is. And nothing could touch me. Right? And the guy, you know, it is, his competition goes to the mic, right? He grabs the fucking mic, right? And he's got nothing. Because Eminem gave him everything. He diffused the whole thing. Right? He had nothing left, man. He had nothing to say. The guy just had nothing to say. Because, he's, because, because Eminem had the courage to, to say it about himself. Right? It would, no fear. No fear whatsoever. My name is Marcus Conti reporting.